This past weekend, I had the opportunity to VOD review a caster from Chinese contenders and a good friend of mine, Dor. While he has a great understanding of the game, I feel as though it almost hurts him in his climb throughout the ranks, especially within Diamond and below. As a tank, it is important that you make your presence known, even if your composition is a bit weird. While being aggressive is easy as Reinhardt when you have a D.Va or a Lucio, the feeling of invincibility goes away when those characters aren't present. Thus, a change in playstyle is required, even if it is unorthodox. Understanding the opportunities you have to pin in and do some damage is important, especially in ladder. I do want to note that Dora has a very defensive playstyle, which still can work, but it depends on the game. I encourage main tank players that may be struggling to try the opposite playstyle of their current one to learn how they can better mesh the two together to create one impenetrable playstyle. It is always good to understand the multiple ways to play the game and not just stick to the book. That being said, go check out all of Dor's socials in the description below. Casters arguably need more support than players to succeed in their field of work, and at the very least, go check him out. He doesn't just cast contenders, but also helps with content creator events hosted by Lordenzo from the Houston Outlaws as well. Definitely a cool dude that I am sure you will all enjoy. But with that all said, I hope you can all learn from this VOD review, and I'll see you in the next one. Welcome back. If you are new here, uh, my name is Paz. I am a 4.4k uh, flex support player that's top 500, played in tier 3 in the past, yada yada yada. Uh, but today, we actually have a special guest, uh, a good friend of mine, a caster for, you, you cast contenders, correct? Yeah, yeah, I cover most of tier 2. Okay, so I have big name here, big name, big boss <laughs> door. Um, with a main tank bot, if you want to introduce yourself, I mean, I already helped you out a little bit, but yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm Dor. I cover Chinese contenders mainly, but I've worked on events like the Florida Mayhem Spring Classic covering all the best talent from tier two. And yeah, I'll be around casting and yeah. play the, play a lot of main tank on, in, in particular, I, ironically, my three most played heroes are Reinhardt, Widowmaker, then May. Uh, I know it makes literally zero sense, but... <laughs> I mean, Ryan and me, you can maybe, but, you know. Yeah, well, the thing is, I think a lot of my play really surrounds uh, my ability to play on a team. I played Collegiate, I played Open Division, and I really play a lot better in, like, a proper 6v6 format. Yes, 100%. Uh, so that's henceforth why I play those characters, but, uh, yeah, so it's main tank VOD. Not too great at solo queuing, I, I feel. I feel like my, my level of play really goes down. So that's what I'm here for. Is it more so like a level of you're not confident in what your team wants to do? Like not confident with communication with like random people? Like how do you go into to games? Because here's the thing. When I play tank, if I want to make sure that my team, like, like for me, carrying on tank is very difficult if you're not communicating, especially when you're playing main tank. Mm -hmm. In my opinion, though, I think main tank is like much better to carry on. Because if you can tell your team with like, a very confident voice what you want to do it's much easier to execute it so what like i want to hear what you think your comms are like i know that this isn't like a comms vod but i want to cover that yeah no i i think my comms are, are strong and they're strong in comp too if my teammates start responding like i need at least one of them to be like talking with me you yes, know okay. uh in this that. case it ended up being a roadhog who like carried most of the game uh but I was definitely leading in comms. I was calling shots. You know, Reinhardt's got the shortest distance range, so he's going to be identifying targets most of the time. Uh, and my team, for the most part, followed me. I think I fell short on more so an individual basis a few yeah. times. A, especially towards, like, the middle of the game, they, they swap hog, and I had a few more hooks that I'm comfortable with. I think there was a few moments in the beginning where I had some bad shield management, but I think that was just not being warm. Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, but it, it's more so individual so positioning mistakes uh a little bit of overextension and misjudging of like enemy ranges and enemy kind of kill points okay gotcha so here's the thing i don't think you're gonna have a problem with macro knowledge at all the reason i say <laughs> this is because you literally watch chinese contenders because that's like your job so like i feel like you're <laughs> yeah. gonna understand how this game functions at a very high level Mm -hmm. I think I think what you might struggle with is translating that into diamonds <laughs> because diamonds don't understand. Because here's the thing. 
I think someone that watches Contenders is going to be a lot better at understanding how the game works than someone that watches Overwatch League, if that makes sense. Because the thing yeah. is, Overwatch League, you you know this, you can't really look at Overwatch League and be like, yeah, this is the comp we're going to play in like open division. Because some of the people in Overwatch League, you're like that's they run comps based around like how consistent people are on those characters. So mm-hmm. you have to you have to play with what you have, and this is not a conventional comp at all. So I think no. <laughs> I think what you might struggle with is understanding how to play the ladder play style, which is pretty much what you told me. But I'm trying to translate that to yeah. to make sure everyone's on the same page here, because uh, the ladder p- play style is a lot different than organized team play, and I I know that you know that. So a lot of what a lot of what I'm gonna say here is I think. Let's look at what comp you're playing first and what comp you're playing into. Because I think that's really important to kind of understand every time you're playing ladder because you, you need to know what random characters they're playing. They're playing very random characters and how you really want to go against that because uh, that's really important. And we did this a lot on attack mode because we struggled with it. Mm-hmm. I'm sure you remember Avoided was like our Achilles heel. We could not beat them. We always lost to Avoided because we, we did not know what to do. So we spent a lot of time looking at weird comps and understanding how we're going to go against that. So first off, what characters do you have mostly in your supports that are going to change the way you're going to normally want to play Ryan? Right. I, uh, I don't have an Ana. I don't have a Lucio, so I'm going to be lacking in single target heals. That's going to be decent with a Baptiste. I'm also not going to have a speed boost to go in and playing with a Roadhog Hanzo kind of tells me that I'm not going to be kind of the main focus of this composition. My job is to take space uh, and stay alive in front of the team so that those players can really get the job done. Yeah. So here's the thing. When you have a BAP, you can be really aggressive. The problem is you have a Briggs, so you're kind of playing for, like, long-term value. Mm-hmm. Uh, you understand that. Um, I guess Ana would be better for the long-term fight. If, here's the thing, if they're on, if, if that guy goes on, ah, it's, it is King's Row, though. It's very hard to say. It's just very important that you understand, that, like, hey, I don't have Lucio. I'm going to have to play a lot slower. That mm-hmm. That's like, just having that mindset off the start can be something you can focus on that'll take the focus away from Tilted. And hello, Baymax, also named Zach. Um, and before I start the VOD, I will be putting Doors, uh, socials and everything in the description. Uh, support your casters. Support the casters you meet because it means a lot more than people realize. And the door is a very cool dude. Very nice and cool <laughs> dude. So uh, <laughs> I just wanted to put that out there because I, I think a lot of people don't actually realize how important it is that you have like some people that are like, hey, yeah, I like well, this guy. So Look, yeah. I mean, I know I'm a caster, but I, I've technically got a uh, I've got prize pool as winnings well. as a That's player. True. I won two hundred dollars in the, the Florida Mayhem Collegiate Brawl or whatever it was called. Oh, so uh, I'm okay. actually a pro player. Oh, okay, okay. Turn him up. Turn him up. <laughs> <laughs> also, also uh, the the one uh, event you hosted for Lodenza, I, I completely forgot about that. You do oh, a lot fun. of stuff. That, I want to yeah. do that again. But okay, let's let's get on to the bot so I don't keep stalling any longer here. Uh, let's just get right into it. How long was this game? Fourteen minutes. Fourteen not minutes. Bad. Not yeah. Bad. This will it's probably. A, it's an right game. Yeah, I'll probably go through the whole thing. You only gonna stay for a bit? That's totally fine, Zach. I, or Baymax, sorry. Um, I appreciate for you for coming in. So I've been doing actually a lot of Reinhardt off stream with people from my chat on an alt account. So I I do have some experience playing Ryan at this rank. Uh, you have to play like almost extremely aggressive if you want to make sure that you're going to maintain like the winning of SR, and you have to make sure that you're like extremely confident. I'll, I'll it's it's so hard because I. There's a lot of different things I do, but I just want to see if I can like kind of tell you stuff if we go into it. Because Ryan is actually a lot a lot more complicated than people realize. Oh, definitely. So your widow already got a pick. Immediately I would be dropping shield and just trying to play as like get in there as fast as possible. Because I'm pretty sure that you actually walked slower with shield. I might be wrong, I'm pretty sure you do. Yeah, it's just a bit. I actually called for the team to try and push to deny res, but by the time it was going off, I don't true, think they have for mercy. Doing it. You're kind of you're kind of true champ. Here's the yeah. thing. Uh, immediately, even if your team isn't going to do it uh, in ladder, I think even though this mercy has to res and you're trying to deny res, which isn't going to happen uh, logically. I didn't. Know, yeah, I didn't know where the yeah. pick was. So um, I was just like, uh, even even if it. the pick's in an okay spot, I I doubt it. But the thing is, is that 
this team is effectively when the Mercy's resing down two people, so you taking the damage here is totally fine. And you're not giving Genji Blade either. You're giving your BAP window. Uh, that's very small, but that's just what I wanted to start out with. Just up, Yeah, you do actually drop it. It just could have been quicker, I guess. I just think that, like, making sure you have a lot of shield is important when you go into the fight. And I think... Mm -hmm. I think you can walk through this main choke unless you're taking so much damage that you're going to die. Like, I think something that I do a lot is I, I really flirt with the devil in terms of when I'm playing Ryan, trying, especially at lower levels when I'm trying to, like, hard carry, is to try to use my shield as little as possible to get my healer's ult charge. If my healer has ult, I'm probably going to be using a shield a lot more. But especially if, like, characters that ultimates aren't really that important or spamming me. like if my diva if that diva is spamming me i'm going to give my bap window and win this fight um because you also it, it's kind of the idea of bap you don't want to waste all of your right clicks before the fight even starts because then you force your team to take a quicker fight you're kind of doing the same thing on reinhardt so you mm -hmm. want to try to avoid that when you can uh it's yeah, very I, nitpicky and we haven't really gotten into anything it's just like the few things i wanted to say so it's in the back of our mind when we go into it but what were you saying yeah, I definitely, like, like I mentioned, I came into this with the mindset of, like, I'm going to play defensively, and I think that ran into my, like, shield management here early on. You'll see it breaks here when I get around the corner, and it's just, like, it was partially not being warm and, like, just not being used to it, but, I, I mean, that's only so much of an excuse. I was definitely yeah. holding it too much. That's totally fine. Um, The other thing is, they have SIG, so you, like, the aggression has to be there, because if you let mm -hmm. the SIG just kind of sit, you know that he's going to do, he's going to do more than if the Rhine is in his face. That's that tends to be the reason why I have to, I play so aggressively in these ranks is because the comps are so reddity and if they own, if they have like a Zarya Sig or like Sig Diva or anything that's not like a very conventional team comp if they have a Zarya or a Sig on their own I am hardcore pushing as hard as I can into that because that guy just can't live. Um, yeah. But let's go into this. All right, you're a little low on shield. Let's see how it works out. Uh, right, you still have shield. You're just shield dancing. This is fine. You're just kind of chilling. I'm, I'm yeah, totally call okay. for a shield reset here. Yep, this is fine. Uh, all right. This is still just totally fine. I would still be looking to, I'd be looking to play cover a little bit better. Um, eh. the problem is, is that like your team has to know, like you have to kind of call you to your team, if you want to take the angle, if you want to take blue angle, you can see my screen, right? If you uh -huh. want to take blue angle like you are, your team has to know to rotate over to this box over here. Because if you just kind of like... Because here's the thing. I agree that this positioning is advantageous for the current situation. Because then it makes the Ash have to roll out more in order to hit your team. The problem is, is if your team doesn't rotate with you, uh, they're in a very bad spot. Specifically the bat. It, like the... I hate playing tank at this rank at times because you kind of have to make sure, like, you have to make up for other people's mistakes and make sure the rotation's clean. Again, yeah. it could be just, the thing is, it's very awkward when they're playing this comp uh, because you kind of have to just, like, make sure your team rotates over here and just hope for the best. That's yeah. That's kind of all you can do because they have range on you and you don't have a Lucio. So, you're, you're, you're still playing very well in terms of playing correctly here but let's keep going because yeah if you see here now this entire angle is just completely open for the enemy and yeah. this isn't really a mistake on your part as much as it's a mistake on the fact that your supports aren't ready to rotate but i hate to say this uh rotational issues are very much a grandmaster problem so until you make it to grandmaster uh this is going to be an issue which kind of sucks on tank but yeah going. so i mean we were talking so earlier about playing you know the ladder mindset versus like with the team in this kind of situation should i be trying to like mother goose people over here a little bit more as opposed to just taking space if, and assuming they're going to make it kind of walk them over and you have the background that you do and you understand what you need to do to win a fight you need to make sure that you are like the the big dick for lack of a better term big dick very confident in comms telling people what to do and being like positive as well don't yeah. be like tilty or be like oh you guys suck you didn't rotate with me be like hey guys rotate with me next time it's all right next fight let's go like yeah. i think having a very confident figure in the game is something that is oftentimes not talked about and that's that's honestly what i think 
I, I honestly think Mother Goose, if that if that's like how kind of how, how you want to think about it, I think that's that is kind of what you're doing. You have to make sure that everyone is playing correctly because at this rank, people aren't used to playing at that fast of a speed. If that makes sense. Yeah, it makes perfect sense. Uh, yeah, it's definitely like comms is something that I think get, gets me most of my SR anyways. So, uh, yeah. I, I, mean, I think just the, telling people to rotate with me here would have been a, a the much idea better is, idea. The idea here is like still very good. It's just if your team isn't doing the same idea, it kind of diminishes the, the purpose. Um, yeah, here's the thing. They didn't actually like follow up on that. If this was a higher level team, that Ash would have killed your BAP. And it's mm -hmm. not really on you. But yeah, I like how you're getting it. I, okay, here's the thing. If if on King's Row you already won the fight, I would just be pushing and just trying to get alt charge if you're really looking to carry. Like I, I'm very aggressive. I'm not sure if that's necessarily correct. But since you already won the fight, I'd be like I'd be playing to take this space here and just let someone uh, cap on their own. Mm -hmm. I think one, one thing that I often get caught off doing is losing track of how many people are dead. Like I'll be able to track how much of an advantage I have in a fight based kind of off pressure of like how much damage I'm taking, like the, the numbers on my screen, but I'll often miss kills in the feed. And it, it, I think that's honestly one of the worst things for me is like, cause in this situation, I definitely could have pushed uh, with my team, but I was actually calling for like three on point. Cause I thought they had an opportunity for a re-engage. Okay. Uh, had we let it go too long, but I, is, again, is... I was wrong. Cause they were three dead. I don't know how to like coach you to get better at that other than like listening for audio cues mm -hmm. of death cues that might be something i'm subconsciously doing and just looking like glancing here more maybe or tabbing mm -hmm. more it's something that you need to be aware of because it will drastically change the way you want to play fights yeah the thing is is like i don't know how to coach that because my entire overwatch career like that's like the biggest focus to me so maybe someone else in chat might have a kind of an idea maybe shocker has something to give for that but I want to keep going just so I don't take forever here. Because right here, yeah, I mean, you most definitely have won the fight. I think you can see that now. Like, right now, if I would have been taking this line too, I would have just literally pinned in here. And if I die, like, okay, I just get better. I, I don't play as aggressive. I would really try to... Right now, it looks like you're playing very defensive, which is a totally fine play style. I would try to get a little bit more aggressive and ladder. And if you make mistakes, you make mistakes. Like, I would pin okay. right here. I'm not scared of that Ash because I have a BAP and I have a Brig. And if I die, I fed, whatever, I get better. I would say, hey, people just aren't going to know you. Whatever, go next. But they they kind of will, but it's whatever. You're playing to improve. Yeah, I'd be shielding and just walking forward. I'd be taking the next corner whenever yeah. I can. Do, wait, do you think I can take a second corner here? With, I didn't know where my BAP was. I didn't think he was far enough forward for me to push this. Like, 700 HP on a shield. Yeah. I didn't I think my back was in a position that I could take a second corner, but maybe I could have squeaked one more out. Here's the thing, right? If you're at this corner here and you have full shield, step one, I'd be playing closer to the corner so that you don't mm -hmm. have to waste so much time with that shield. And I would at least try to pressure them. If you get like here, let me let me draw this out. If you were to do this optimally and you got to like the halfway point and you were like getting your shield destroyed, you still have time to rotate around without your back using the ammo. And if your mm -hmm. BAP isn't in position, there's two reasons for that. If he's he's either not listening to you, or uh, he just made a mistake, and like that's whatever. But you have like, I feel like you have to you have to put yourself in aggressive situations to carry out of this rank if you're having trouble. Mm -hmm. Like I would, I always just go for it, whether that's right or wrong. I don't know. I just, I tend to play a very, very, very aggressive Reinhardt. Like, extremely aggressive. Probably because I played on console and I didn't really get punished for shit, but I, it still works. Because then you can always just fall back here, and worst comes to worst, obviously you could die, but you're not going to do that. Uh, your your BAP gets window. The Ash already has ult. Uh, I, I get that people aren't calling that out, but, you know, it's just something to note. Right here, you have shield again. I'd be looking. They're getting a little bit too close for not having a rhyme. I'd be looking to, to pounce back. The big, the big problem I think with, especially with the tanks I've actually been playing against, when I'm like queuing with people on my chat, is that 
Reinhardt's just let people walk all over them because they're trying to play like perfect. And I think you might be falling into this syndrome of like, I need to play like extremely defensively so that no one dies because that's my role as a tank. But I think you also have to understand that you're kind of making your team die if you're letting the enemy team walk all over them, uh, mm -hmm. walk all over you. So it's kind of this mix of big ego, big dick tank to, okay, let's, let's, let's take back the aggression a bit. Mm hmm. Yeah, I've definitely got a bit of variability, but again, I was just like, I was in such a mindset with this comp between Hog, Hanzo, Junk, I was like, just keep space and let them do the work. I called the shred this that. Bob and it took like 10 seconds. Yeah, I get, I I so get what sad. you said though about the, uh, the, the, the different characters that you have, but you also have to understand they don't have, they don't have Lucio Brawl. Mm -hmm. You have a BAP against their Brawl. You are not going to lose that. Like, you can do whatever you want into this comp, and you should. And the other thing <laughs> is, is if you play too defensively, then they can't actually rotate to angles for them to take. Like, they can't rotate through this alleyway. They can't rotate up the stairs here because they never were allowed to. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You still have to give them the space to rotate. Uh, it's just, it's not as much of you walking in and doing gold damage, Reinhardt. Um, I'm not really going to comment on this BAP. You, you, I mean, you kited it out. That was the right play to do. And um, whether or not they break it fast, that's on them. So, I mean, your junk's also tiring. So, This is the right call, though, to kite back and to play corners. Shield's down. You want to be taking space here. Uh, here's the thing, right? While I like that you waited to fire strike, that's totally fine. I don't want you to fall into the trap of I have to play with the window where the window is placed. The moment that they start backing up, you get into their face. Because after you mm -hmm. fire strike, you're not getting anything out of it. And I just think being more aggressive will help you tenfold. Like 100%. Because um, I think I think when you play aggressive, you're going to make mistakes. You're going to feed, but you're smart enough to understand when you make those mistakes, when you have to dial it back. I just think playing more aggressive will help you a lot. Uh, yeah, ditching that fight over there, right call. I think always focusing on the front lane. Here's the thing. Right here, there's no reason for you not to pin that SIG. Like, now there is, be well, now there is because there's a Hanza there, but if you make the space to the SIG there, you'll probably get an MO, you'll be able to shield, and then your team can focus on this Hanzo because now he has no rotation back to SIG. Yeah, he'd be cut off. Yeah. yeah. I would just play to be riskier. Maybe in GM and like some tier two level scrim, that doesn't work. But like, here's the thing. We've watched We're trying to gain like, SR, man. <laughs> we've watched players like Gig, who does that kind of stuff in, their, in Bumper. The reason why it works is because like, they understand their limits. And mm -hmm. I think ladder is a very good place to do that. Because at the end of the day, if you're focusing on improvement, you'll get there. Yeah, I, I, I wouldn't even feel the need to shield right now. I would just straight up, like, if the SIG hasn't ulted yet, doesn't matter, he's not getting ult charge. My BAP is, let my shield regen. Now, okay, if the if the Hanzo just comes around the corner and starts spamming me, yeah, I'm going to put my shield up. But, you know, being aggressive and getting in their face, not letting them do whatever they want. This is good. I like this. I want to see more of that. The shatter was a little much. I'd rather see the pin. But right there... Okay. The aggression that you showed there, that will win you diamond games, like 100% of the time. Especially if you're telling your team, hey, get aggressive with me. I'm on the Hanzo, 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 sick, sick, sick. They, they like, it's it's free low at that point. Because mm -hmm. here's the thing, you definitely could have hit that pin earlier and then the Reaper wouldn't have been on you. Yeah. Because now, yeah, okay. You pinned, whatever, the Shatter, I, I don't think the Shatter was great the, because of the timing. But I don't think we should focus on the shatter. I think we should focus on the lack of aggression when you had the opportunity to. Because you would have killed him sooner. Therefore, the Reaper would not have had the opportunity to follow up on your shatter and pin. You, you would have had the opportunity to shatter the Reaper instead. That kind of makes sense, though. Yeah. Do you have any questions? Uh, no, I was definitely, like, I was playing here to try and force staggers. Because we got the first. I knew they were coming in kind of one at a time. I wanted the second. I thought we could win after that. And I, like you said, getting that kill quicker allows a lot more to happen. So, yeah. 
I'm very unconfident in my pins. I'll say that. Like, not that I can't hit them, but just like, well, first of all, jank ass ability. I've had way too many bad experiences with just stuff it's bouncing true. off me, but that that's life. Uh, it, but I, I mean, outside of that, I think I just kind of, even when I'm playing a much more aggressive right, even when I got a team that's like really pocketing me, I don't find myself pinning often. Uh, and so I'll definitely just uh, try and fail more, you know? Here, yeah, here's the thing. The only way you get better by at pinning is by pinning. I mean, <laughs> like, I'm good enough at connecting them. It's just, I, I feel like, you know, whenever I'm timing them, like, it's always just the wrong time, you know? Well, I mean, you'll you'll realize when it is the wrong time and when it is the right time. Like, mm -hmm. here, let, let's take it back. The moment when there's only two in main and there's, like, the Hanzo is rotating here. He was actually here at the moment you should have pinned. Even if you pin here and you miss, you're still right next to the Sig pressuring him and swing. Mm -hmm. If it was a Reinhardt and he had pin and the Ana sleeps you, okay, you have to respect that Rhine a little bit more. Like, that I understand. But then you you have to be keeping tabs if the Ana has sleep or not. Um, here, here I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you something specifically with me. I am not confident in my aim as a flex support whatsoever, especially with my sleep darts. But the only way I'm going to get better is if I keep putting myself in situations where I have to hit those sleep darts. Mm -hmm. And I know people are going to be like, Paz, but you hit crazy sleep darts. You always hit socks, dude. <laughs> yeah. No, my aim compared to literally anyone else in tier three or tier two was probably the worst of all the flex supports that I played with. The only way you get better is by practicing. And my, the thing I always tell people is even if people call you out, Sure, they're going to be mad for a day, but this is Diamond. By the time you're GM, they really aren't going to know you. Mm -hmm. Like, obviously, for you, it's a little bit different because you do something much greater for the game than in this ladder match. You're you're much more prominent, but still, I think it kind of applies because I don't think these guys are watching contenders. I'm going to be completely honest with you. <laughs> I don't even watch contenders. I that think the much. average person yeah. doesn't, unfortunately. Yeah, I mean, there's. I could go on a, on a whole rant about that, but <laughs> this is a bot review, hey, not a not a podcast. Here, here's my shout out. Here's my my shameless plug. Watch contender smile. Yeah, just just watch it. Just watch. Specifically, you know, I'm not gonna say that. Just watch contenders. Support tier two. I like the aggression here. Like, I just want more of this. Mm -hmm. I can't see if you're looking behind you. But I wouldn't tunnel vision on that diva bomb for as long as you did, only because there is the opportunity for the Ana to for a rock, you. yeah, or the something rock. like that. So I remember when I was plat, I thought this was so cool. Uh, I used to watch. I actually used to watch contenders as a kid because I knew about it and I knew it would be better for me because those players are more attainable. That's what I thought, uh, and I always <laughs> saw like in goats compositions, like. Oh, this diva bomb was great because it forced the Ryan to turn around, and then the Ryan got to shatter his back. It's like I always think of that situation. Bro, it, I don't even remember what it was. It was actually Apex. OG blocking both in like two frames. I think and it was on Li Zhang, um Control Center, right? I think uh, so. it might have been. I think it was on Rialto. Either way, it still, happened in Apex. Clip. Like if you remember Apex, if, if that's even what it was called before Overwatch League existed, was it called Apex? think so yeah that's what i remember it was like uh it wasn't even it wasn't goats it was triple tank versus triple tank and i remember mm -hmm. some dude blocked the shatter and the diva bomb that's the kind of stuff that you kind of have to look for because if this was me on anna and i saw you doing that that <laughs> is like the most free sleep of my life because you don't even have a zarya or a diva like that is free money that is a free fight win so you got to make sure you're looking out for that mm -hmm. Right here. here, I'm calling yeah, kill the Reaper because uh, he's the only thing that's gonna actually get through our team. I just like oh, that you're just... being aggressive. I don't even care what you're targeting. I just like that you're being aggressive, mm -hmm. and I want to see more of it. Yep, yeah, I like the shield because you're playing to live, and yeah, you're you're just playing point, playing to uh, do damage. Right here, I'd be pinning immediately as far as I can to take as much space as possible for my team. Mm -hmm. I I feel like that's something I definitely am realizing here is that. Like, pinning during fights, you know, questionable if all six people are alive. Like, it, more often than not, it's probably not going to be the right decision. But pinning post-fight to take space that's, is that's an easy good. opportunity that's almost never going to be wrong. And here's the thing. Like, while the hog is here, if I pin too far and die to a hog, my bat probably could have saved me or I'd made a mistake. 
but it's mm-hmm. good that I made that mistake. Like I, when I play games, I look to make mistakes. Not okay, not purposely, but I, I look to be aggressive. And if it's too aggressive, I know that I have to dial back. Mm-hmm. What I used to do as a kid, because I was seven, 16, 17 in Path to Pro, I used to be like, oh, dude, my team's just bad because I was streaming too and I didn't want to get embarrassed. Now I have, uh, I've aged like fine wine and realized, to no, the, to it's the ripe really just me. To the ripe age of 18, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm turning 19 <laughs> next week. Wait. Oh, yeah, that's true. August 10th. Yeah, 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 yeah. Which I will do a stream for. I don't know what I'm going to do yet, but I, I think I'm going to do something community. Um, but yeah, may, be ag- I think being aggressive is far better than being scared. Because right mm-hmm. here, if my junk is pushing this far, and this is a big mistake he's making, and I see a hog right here, I've got to save him. Mm-hmm. So I'd be playing aggressive, even if, this, if, even if it's almost too aggressive, just so I can save the junk. Because he should have died. He definitely should have died to this hog here. Like, there's no reason this hog didn't just see a junk jump in like rocket man up here and didn't just land an easy hook like there's just no reason that he shouldn't have done that um i'd get aggressive because here's the thing when you're playing that aggressive they have to use cooldowns to make you go backwards so then you're like you're you're, it's just an all-around like plus shocker what's up akash what about him what's up with akash akash is amazing pretty good at dive tanks yeah Akash is actually like probably one of the nicest main tank players and contenders. You love him? Yeah, it's good. I can't tell if he's making fun of the memes or if he's just memeing with the memes. But I think he's memeing with the memes. He's a nice dude. He just hard the game and carried. Yeah, he's 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 really nice. Really good player. I don't know him personally, but he's pretty she's pretty chill. I, like, literally, dude, I'd be looking to play so aggressive. Like, I am a swing away from Shatter. They have no shields now. This is just GG's. I'd be mm-hmm. looking to get in their face. And if I die, I messed up. Look how juicy that is, man. And Liana just used sleep. Oh, man. Like, you have a break. Whatever. The Reaper will be fine. If you need to look around and make sure everything's okay, go for it. Great Shatter. I think you could have done it sooner. That's I right. think you could have been more aggressive. Right here, I'd be pinning. I'd be pinning that hog because my bap is fine. There's nothing. A little late, but you still did it. And he has. I can't hook. believe. That's wait, fine. can I get? Can I get a replay? I did not think this guy was close enough to actually hook me over the edge. It's. Oh my god. It's so close. What happened? Like, was I'm probably that your model, I'm your model guy, got, and if he hooks me, I'm not gonna die. Yeah, your model oh got my god. probably stopped by this, and then it it, it was like a longer range hook. Come on. But you know you know how you I, I hate to say this, but you know how you could have avoided this? If you forced out the hook sooner and you were more aggressive. Now yeah. here's the thing. Um if obviously like you don't want to do that all the time, but I think I I argue that you could have forced a hook out. I argue that you could have. Mm-hmm. It might not be the, the perfect play for a higher level scenario, but I think being more I'm going to say the same thing all VOD. Just be more aggressive. Like, yeah. <laughs> All I'm saying is I want to be on a team with that guy. I hate to tell you the shocker, but Akash is going to stay tier 2 for quite a long time. If not, well, if not tier 1, but that's a whole can of worms. And, a, okay. and you guys won before. So, yeah. I feel like the problem is going to, going to persist through a lot of this. Uh, not, it's not necessarily a problem. You're just a more defensive tank player. I think... It's almost too ad- but if defensive. I'm, yeah, if I'm trying to play aggressive, yeah. I'm trying to, you know, play for, like, the, the rank style, you know? Especially. Shocker. You're saying, you're saying I'm not good enough? Shocker. Tier 2 takes years of dedication, man. I'm not saying you're not ever going to play on him. I'm just saying he's going to stay Tier 2 for a while. Shocker. You are, you. <laughs> you, are, you, you have to understand, it is the best time for you to be playing this game because there are no flex supports because everyone is sick and tired of playing BAP. Why do you think everyone's quitting? Because they want to play Ana and Zen and not Bap. Hey, Shocker, I just, I don't want people to think I have an ego. I am trying to reform. I'm just making sure you know I'm not egoing you. Uh, it just takes a lot of time to get where Akash is. It's all good. He's well known in that community. He's he's not going to be, like, he's he's very far up there. Well, speaking of ego, here comes a, a three-minute montage of meeting hooks that I should just be blocking, but I'm not because I'm bad, so. All right, well, let's see it. 
Yeah. Let's see if you were actually being more aggressive. I don't know. All right, you, they, okay, let's actually look at what you have. You have the same thing. They have a Doom. That's going to get annoying. Here's the thing. They still only have a Sig with pretty much no heals for them. Uh, be aggressive on that Sig when you get the opportunity to. Don't, mm -hmm. let, don't let this Sig act like a Rhine. Like, that is the biggest thing you don't want to do. The other thing, when you're playing in a Rhine v. Rhine, don't let the Rhine swing your shield. Don't let him do that. Hello, Magia. Yeah. Happy birthday, Magia. Everyone, happy birthday, Magia, in the chat. I think more often than not, I'm not scared by, like, say, a Sigma or something. I'm more scared of, like, Hog Hanzo. Like, and just getting, you know, clapped out of nowhere kind of stuff. Valid. From, from valid. just shredded Overwatch in 2021 stuff. Because, like, they, they can have, like, three people alive. But if one of those is, like, Hanzo, you can still very much die. And that's when I think I get two in my shell for sure. Here's the thing. If you pressure Hanzo and you get in his face, he ain't going to do shit. Yeah. He ain't gonna it's do shit. Tough without a Lucio, but again, just being a little bit less yeah. afraid to charge. Uh, it's not even charge. Just setting yourself up to be more aggressive when you have the opportunity to. Uh, mm -hmm. you'll, you'll see those situations, I think, after this. I'm, I'm totally cool. That's a good block. I'm totally cool with you chilling here. This is totally fine. You're playing more defensive. Well, because it's defense. Right here, yeah. Play back this corner. This is great. You understand the rotations. Tunnel visioning too hard over here. Um... It's kind of like when people were playing, uh, you know, Night Market Lijong. Mm -hmm. It's kind of when if you when people were playing like Rhine comps on that, like with Sim, but a counter to that was like some some weird like Farah Ball comp. Yeah, just mass um, spam. So it's it's kind of like the when the ball slams, the Rhine's job is not to slap the ball but to shield main. Mm -hmm. Kind of like in this situation, you don't want to give them so you don't want to like lose lose the pressure of main because the moment they see that you're not looking there they're going to take that space and it's going to be a lot harder to be aggressive yeah i uh i think the reason i looked over here for so long was because i spotted a player but i didn't know who it was and i was worried it was a hog uh but i didn't identify it as a doom because like you know my backline can deal with a doom fist pretty reasonably i would argue your backline can deal with a hog too fair i mean you have a brig you like if you're if your whole backline including a hog can't deal with it you know I still here's the thing. If you see the hog in this doorway, I think putting here. Let me let me go third person quick. Mm -hmm. uh, I think something that I would commonly do in this situation is I think putting the shield just barely covering this and like almost looking at the wall, so that you can still mm -hmm. see what's going on over here, because then you can kind of do an Uno reverse tactic as I call it, <laughs> as this tank sigma thinks that you're not looking at him he can over he's gonna overextend and the moment he does that you say all right i'm dropping that entire aggression and just walking right into him yeah that's not specifically what the uno reverse is the uno reverse is if <laughs> their hog hooks your hog and you're on ana and you nano him and then he just completely decimates the team that's the true uno reverse but it's still kind of the same idea it's close enough yeah you know for the memes yeah. it's more memorable that way oh no paz said the fun here Right. Yeah, I think there, I mean, there's a lot of reasons why I think my aggression lacks. I also just don't trust ranked players. But and I think I, I, just, I have to get over that if I want to play confident and aggressively, you know? It's like. You just gotta. I don't really think about who's on my team. I just kind of play. And, mm -hmm. like, players sometimes have bad games. I don't think there's such a thing as a bad player. I just think that there's people that have more bad games than others. That's kind of the <laughs> mental that I have. Like, certainly, sure, they could be a bad player, but, like, bad players still have good games. So, uh -huh. I think that's a mentality that might help you. That's what I, like, for, for unranked to GM, the way that I have literally not been tilting is, like, yo, our team just had a bad game. No bad players, just bad game. While that might not be true, maybe that can help you be more aggressive and trust your team. Okay. Like, right here, yeah, I like this. Yeah, now that your shield's going down. Yes, okay, back up. Now you understand that you can't be as aggressive as you were. You need to chill and let your shield recharge. Give them ticks, maybe. You see that the hog gets hooked. I like that you're being aggressive. Should I help your hog out? And you just got two picks. This is really good. I want to see this kind of gameplay more. That was exactly what you needed to do. I would have... I don't know if I would have pinned there. I think this is fine. Yep, shielding to block the nade. Door, that was, like, really good stuff. Thanks. That I want to see that more personally like that is good stuff i know you know that is good stuff let's keep going yeah they played far up at uh <laughs> okay. not particularly yeah. interactive character 
So, I Farrah shouldn't be eating field damage of, here, I'll tell you that much. Yeah. Shield dancing is really important here. The thing with Farah is, like, you actually... You have to know when to play aggressive, but you're going to be mm -hmm. playing passive a lot of the time. Uh, you have to understand when it's time for you to win the ground war. I would. That's the way I would put it. I'd be helping the hog out here. That's just what I'd be doing, just playing a little more aggressive. Uh, you could have pinned there, actually, and taken him off guard. Uh, that's really aggressive, though, so I understand if you don't want to do that. When the hog was in deep? When the, when the hog was here and he just got a pick he's logically going to leave so uh -huh. i would have hooked or not hooked i would have pinned um because this then tells your team to even if you don't hit this this pin tells your team to stabilize in here um in in hotel rather uh kill the hog and then take a fight again uh, that's what i would have done not necessarily the right or wrong call this looks like an entirely different game compared to gold matches. Not, it, it, there is a lot of difference. Oh wow, that's tough. That's just unlucky. I no, I, I should have blocked that. I mean, <laughs> it, it was free. I dropped shield and I went for a fire strike when I knew we had to go. That, well, let's that's see. on me. It's like, is it really on you though? If you thought the hog was here and like again, let's again, yes, when I, it could immediately be a after mistake. I died to it, I knew. I, I was like, I should have known that. Like, I, I don't know. Felt like I knew it. You could connect the dots there, sure. I think what's more important here is the other avenues that you also had. Because here's the thing. You could have played this corner a lot harder, which honestly I would have done in this situation. And then if you wanted the fire strike, you can kind of peek out fire strike. And then not just like fire strike. The whole thing is that while your whole animation is active, you are fire striking in the open. Mm -hmm. That is something I could say. I just think there's a lot of options you had. Be aggressive here be less aggressive here wait for the fire strike to try to get some alt charge because that's obviously what you're going for you had a fire strike here because you need to get a shatter to carry this fight like yeah i just oh that's why i knew yeah because i fire strike that corner knowing the hog was going to come around it yeah so, so yeah i knew it was coming there literally like what you can do play this better uh play play this corner better peek out when the fire strike's about to happen hit it quit it cool uh execution was faulty guess what we all, that all happens that happens everywhere i sleep walls every game it's you know i mean and i still win so oh don't look at this don't look at this oh my god no i entered <laughs> we all make mistakes sometimes that's just no, that's like just incredibly unlucky like sure you could have played it better it's still kind of unlucky i could have just not peeked the corner against the hog I, I just made the same I mean, fucking mistake yeah, twice. yeah, but it's like, <laughs> you can shield that corner too. It's like, still, it was a little bullshit. I mean, I still like, here's the thing. I'm, I'm more so training or like coaching on the idea behind what you're doing. Like, I uh -huh. like that you were being aggressive and taking this space because you realize if you can force this hog out here, you can then take the fight in the most powerful choke in the game here. Like, I like, I like the thought process behind that. Mm-hmm. Was it perfect execution? No, you died, you know, like eh. but uh I think the idea behind it is good. It was aggressive and it was it was aggressive the way I would have done it. And like we all make mistakes, whatever. We're human. Hello there. Uh music just completely bought it out. Let me fix that. Alright. Let's continue this. Nice block. Not letting this hog do whatever he wants. I'd be looking for the shatter relatively soon. Blocked the. I'm waiting for yeah. the shield. Yeah. yeah. There it is. And Honestly, if he's not gonna. Yeah. Okay. Hold up. Let's let's take this back a bit because there's a lot that might have been happen here. Shield there. Honestly, right here I would have just. Sh wait, do they have a hook? Yeah, yeah, they do. Okay, that was smart. You are a. You are very um patient. That is something that I lack when I'm playing games. Right here, though, I'd be looking to just turn the corner and shatter. I mean, he has shield. You might be right. Again, I think it's just a difference in play style, but I think this is fine. I think the the negative difference in play style is that I think you just need to be a little bit more aggressive. Mm -hmm. I'm, like, extremely aggressive, so I think your play style is... If you, be more, if you are more aggressive, it'll be, like, the perfect amount. Yeah, there's Rock. Yeah, this uh, is tough. Shield comes. I get hooked, which was... I was just like, sure. I'm just going to turn around and shatter your team. But 
I would be honestly looking for that. That's so hard to coach. It's so hard for me to be like, eh, is this a wrong play? I would just be I mean, looking to shield that because you know that the hog, if the hog isn't, if the hog isn't main, because there's no way he would have cleared library, you know he's looking for a hook here, so you kind of have mm -hmm. to just shield dance, shield dance, block the hook quick, shatter team, uh, or shatter sooner. Like, I'm just trying to give you other options options that you yeah. can do because that's kind of what because at the highest level in contenders it's not the, the mistake and even overwatch league the mistakes people are making is because team a puts team b in bad situation where they have to pick one of two bad decisions like decisions they don't want to have to make they have to in a split second make the good decision that's going to win them the fight and that is mm -hmm. what makes that is what makes contenders contenders it's extremely difficult to do that um so by giving you the different options that you have you can kind of weigh down in the split seconds that you have to like do that kind of stuff which yeah. is what i'm attempting to do. Ooh, i like this play though his dash stopped like two feet off the ground i'm so sad it was play of the game it, it just barely it was the didn't right get call, him though yeah was your bap dead he's somewhere oh you don't even have a bap you have an honor <laughs> okay yeah your honor's dead so actually maybe pushing here was wrong but I, I, I don't want to spend too much time on this because we, we have been doing this for a bit. Mm -hmm. I don't want to waste everyone's time. Um, being aggressive here, if they're not going to take the, the space, you're going to take the space. Okay, uh, it's kind of the ball idea again. Even though the fire is behind, you have to make sure that this hog isn't going to kill your Kree main or the Sig's not going to kill your Kree main. Like, mm -hmm. the, like, Because in all reality, what is the shield doing i i was just, i was just lazily like i was calming with my team here i wasn't even like paying attention to the fight which was just know. make sure that your your go-to thing is making sure frontline is safe because that is your job okay. is winning. yeah let's keep you on though like now it's like i just man like now you want to yeah i think they're just timing you understand that whatever you lost your crew so you're just playing this angle that's a really good fire strike and you're just kind of spamming. I, I like the aggression. That's exactly what I would have done. This is like exactly what I would have done. I would have pinned that. I would have pinned that immediately. Two, oh, two. this is this is fucking sad. You got woke. Honestly, the the more aggressive you think to play, that is just gonna get so much more value. Mm -hmm. And then you, yeah, that's unlucky based on timing. But still, I think you could have avoided the unluckiness. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that's another situation. If your hog hooks an enemy hog and he has a lot of health, just look for the pin immediately. Did I pin up? Oh, I did. Damn, just barely. Either that or swing once and shield main so that Diana cannot hit a nade because she is going to look for the nade immediately. Mm -hmm. That's that's honestly a, a really nice thing. Since I've played Ana so much, I know how other, other Anas want to play. I don't know how much you've definitely not put as much on hours as I have because you've touched grass. Um, oh, uh, so, <laughs> so just know that like when, it, when a hog gets hooked, if Ana has cooldowns, she will want to throw those out immediately. Yeah. So I, uh, sure in this case, I actually, I usually try to body block them while swinging. So I'll stand in between. So you'll notice here, I actually wrap around the hog. But I don't, should I be shielding those or just eating them with my body? Because they only had like, I wasn't going to die to them. Here's the thing. If you if you eat a nade with your body, if you're right next to a hog, she still gets bonus heals. That's not good. Or mm -hmm. better yet, she pretty much just counters the damage you're doing. Because she just heals it. Mm -hmm. So I think one swing and shield is good. One okay. swing, block, block the cooldown, keep going. Because anti-nade... Antinade makes you a target then, and you don't want to do yeah, that. Yeah, I'll, I'll deal with that differently then in the future. That was, that was definitely like my go-to method of taking it. Yeah, you want to make sure you're making Ana's like... Because if you block the shield, it's also a mental thing for Ana's. Like when I when, <laughs> I'm, when I get blocked, when, when, a, when a nade gets blocked by DM or shield, I, I feel it. It does not go unnoticed. I It's in the back of my mind. Right here, I'd be uh, shielding up here and making sure you understand who is here and what like what's going on. Okay. Because uh, you, you always have the shield, you have the resources to rotate back if you absolutely need to. Good block. 
You can't block every hook, but you're blocking a good bit of them. All right, you just killed their mercy. I am aggressive now. Nice. I wouldn't completely disregard the fact that the hog is in the back line. Just making sure you know where he is. That's just like one of those times, difference of play style, but that was risky. What, the pin? I think so. I think I would have, because you had that sig one shot, I would have just focused the sig down first. He landed on the mega. Oh, did he? Yeah. That's why, that's why I was like, ah, oh, screw this. I'll go take the other fight. <laughs> difference in play style. I think you still can swing on that sig. Uh-huh. I think it's more so a difference in play style than a mistake. Okay. I'd be better at knowing if it's a mistake or not. If I've played Rhine consistently in tier three scrims, I have done it once. So, yeah. I played main tank once in a, a high- so, Do I ask how that went? Scrim. It actually went really well. I, I'm pro. Oh, I, I honestly, I've, I've considered role swapping to main tank, but it would be so sleeper. It's only because I, I tend to be a player that likes to calm a lot. Mm -hmm. And that's like the exact opposite of what flex support wants to do. They want to be so confident in their aim that they can take anything. And that is not me. It's getting better though. It's getting better. It's not perfect. Being quicker with the movement. That's a mechanical issue. Whatever. Just play the game more. Just don't have a job or have study. I look to slam that so fast. That shield isn't out. The shield's out now because I saw the animation. I'd be slamming that so fast. Oh, oh, oh. Dude, dude. That I was like, died. here's the thing. Here's the thing. In, from watching that, there are so many different things. Like, you're, like here's the first thing that happened. Oh shit, I missed a shatter opportunity. That's the worst one. I'm left-handed. Uh, sorry. Uh, two is, oh shit, I'm nanoed. Number three is, I don't have Lucio. They're so far away from me. Hog and backline. What do I do? I need shatter. Like, it, there are so many. It, like, this is like kind of what the situation was. I don't even blame you for not knowing what to do. I would have just been more aggressive and shattered sooner to avoid uh, discord. This situation. <laughs> yeah. That, like... That, that's a lot of what my coaching was when I was on attack mode. It was not like, like, let's say that uh, immos were a problem. Uh, let's not look at immos, but let's look at what led to me using my immo in a bad spot. And then that highlights, wow, my resource management is terrible. I'm going into every fight with five healing grenades because I'm spamming stupid heals before the fight starts. Mm -hmm. uh, if you can prevent it from happening, then you can look into the more... Uh, macro, or not macro, but the, the bigger problems. Yep, I like the aggression. <laughs> yeah, that's good. I like that. You 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 make sure you kill that. Yeah, you got a little dicey. You probably didn't. You probably didn't need the shatter in retrospect, but I like that you were aggressive with throwing it out. And the more you play, the better you'll get at that. I'd be looking to be aggressive. This angle is totally fine to take for alt charge. Uh, let's keep going. We want to make sure that that hog doesn't get to just throw a hook, you know? Yeah. Right. Eh, whatever. I was trying to bait it. that guy in. It actually worked. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Like, now that they're back and they're starting to invest alts, this is the time when you want to rotate back. You do not want to rotate in now because you don't even have shatter, do you? No. If you had shatter, I can totally, I, I can totally understand. Like, yeah, this is not good because you're, you're subjecting yourself to death. But here's the thing. Even though this was an aggression mistake, look how long you still survived when that was a really big mistake. Mm -hmm. Like you got to overstay your welcome. Maybe don't do that in like GM, but um, I still think that this is a good lesson to be like, wow, that was a mistake for how aggressive you were in a bad situation. But look how long you still survived. Now don't be that aggressive. Like I, I do not condone feeding in the back line. But, I you do. know, I, I do a lot of stream. <laughs> you, you'd think I would condone it, but uh, I, try to, I try to be educational. All right, so she just got another nano. All right, the moment you see a trans, oh, that's on your team. Yeah, yeah I, call, I call trans engage here. And that's pretty much right what we did. Never trans engage. Well, he no, he transfers something, and then I said okay. make it an engage. It was, I just sorry. wanted to make sure. Never yeah, yeah. say to you. <laughs> no. That is my biggest pet peeve. <laughs> when players think that Zen's ultimate is an engagement tool. It is no, can I see transfer though? Wait, because I, I saw him trans and I was like, okay. uh, okay, I guess we're going in now. 
Okay, what? Okay, he was gonna. He wasn't even gonna die. Just rotate the hydra hog. <laughs> okay, whatever. That's just gonna happen. But the moment we say that, you're like, okay, we're pushing. We're pinning. We're pinning. You're not gonna die. Trust. If there's a trans, there is no way you're dying. There's no chance. No trans. Like chance. <laughs> the funny. <laughs> Pass very funny. Damn, dude, you should be a caster or something. <laughs> I do not think I'm fit to be a caster. Actually, uh, you could do it. Maybe. I'd have to practice a lot, though. I'm, I'm yeah, nowhere near... It's, it's, a, it's a whole other skill set. Yes. Alright, I like where you're holding now. I look for a fire strike just for all. We, we all missed. <laughs> That's, like, such an incredibly difficult angle to hit, though. Like, oh. whatever. I would have waited for the hog to sit up. And then all of us attack. But that that requires like insane understanding of when he's gonna wake up and everything. Oh! I like your reaction to it, but damn, that's unlucky. I'd be rotating back left, just a little bit quicker there. Oh, the this rotation. this was a super good call. Yeah, I called back. I checked tab right here, and or not right here. We back off a little further. It was with there's a, there's a transfer engaged somewhere here. The final fight, though, is really good. I like the idea. It's just unlucky to, uh, the way they were padding. Because usually that would have been fine if they were GM and actually padding correctly. And your hog just fired it. That was really well done. Like, sure, there could have been very minor improvements there. But, um, yeah. It's fine. All right, we're looking for alt charge. I like the aggression. Not overstaying the welcome though. Telling, like, right now, your team's kind of overstaying the welcome. I'd be like, all right, we got the pick, dip. Or we got the pick, let's see if they're running backwards. Let's see if we can be aggressive. Right here though, I, I, you definitely want to be telling your team to not push. And your team is, your team's just not listening. Uh, which is tough. Big sleep. Yeah, that was huge. Okay, don't. Uh, I no, know he lives it. I called that I was charging, and okay. he lives it with like 50 HP. Yeah, so you fine. need like a, an anti nade more. That's fine. Yeah, I, that, that's cool. I just want to make you, you do not understand that, so that's good. Yeah. Uh, yeah, your shield's getting low. You need to be rotating back right or getting in. No, no, we have trans. We have trans. He, okay. I, I yep. pressed tab during yep. that disengage. It was... Yep, yep, yep. This is fine then. I like that. This is good. Big slam coming. Right. You didn't even get hooked by Hog that much. Alright. So, the final remarks. The word of the day. Can you tell me what the word of the day is, Dwight? If it's not aggression, dude, I don't, I don't know what it is. All right, you're correct. Be more aggressive. While this might not actually be the end-all, be-all tip, I think that you could benefit from playing more aggressive. I think, I think what watching how you have to play that style of Ryan is important, even if you don't have a Lucio. Even if the comp isn't all about you, I think playing aggressive at this rank is really important. And everyone chat, be aggressive, be, be <laughs> aggressive. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> um, number two, um, pinning. Be more confident with pins and understand when you need, like when you should pin. I pin a lot. I make a lot of mistakes with my pin. But I'd say 70%, 70 to 90% of the time, my pins are on point getting getting me to where i need to be and getting me all charged getting me picks yada 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 even if mm -hmm. i die for it if i get the pick cool if i could pick off the enemy ryan and i live for an extra five seconds i gave my team the the advantage for five seconds in a brawl v brawl um that's kind of my thought process uh i wouldn't adopt my thought process 100 percent because it's pretty it's pretty wrong when you're playing against a better team but it's just being aggressive is really important. <sighs> Number three, I usually tell people to do aim arena, but this is tank. So, um, just reaction time blocking stuff. I don't know. That's most of what it is. I mean, like, sure. You could practice that. I mean, you could practice the Ryan one V one thing. Sure. I just don't think that's like the main, th like, I think you just need to learn how to play more aggressive and understand that ladder mindset better. Mm-hmm.
Because I don't really think there is a third thing to worry about. I mean, like, sure, there were mistakes that you're making in terms of fire strike and stuff. But it's like, when you're playing Ryan into those Reddit comps, you either have to switch off Ryan or make your presence known. That's in fair. My that's, a, that's a good way of putting it. Like, because if, if your presence isn't known, like, why aren't you playing Sig? Mm -hmm. Why weren't we on Sig Hog then, you know? If you were on Sig, honestly, I think you would have played, like, a perfect game almost. But I think on Ryan... Especially on King's Row, you need to take advantage of the map that you have. Okay. Honestly, oh, someone from chat said, honestly, Dor, like, wait, Dor seems like he would improve automatically at everything when he puts himself out more. In line, yeah, I think, I think if you put yourself in more stressful situations, you will improve. I think so. Do you have any questions or concerns? Um, let's see. I think, again, I think comms are kind of the main thing that carry me through most of these games, but uh, outside of that, so what, it was tracking people who are dead, understanding True. when to find aggression. I think, oh man, dude. Okay, so when it comes to tanks, I can play, like, I think my D is actually starting to get up to snuff, but like, Ryan and like a, a sprinkling of of sigma and like winston if it's double bubble because i understand double bubble really well from having covered chinese contenders for so yeah, long yeah uh but uh, honestly it is like 99 percent ryan hours so forcing ryan with other tanks like i can play it with azari i can play it with diva i can play it with the sigma i think a lot of my problems come up when i start playing like ryan hog and uh when people lock ball too people insistently lock ball and i get <laughs> i get totally just mind fuck because the rest of my team will be like locking a ball comp or locking a uh, a brawl comp and then this guy locks ball and i'm just like okay now it just feels like i'm fighting a 1v2 versus their tanks uh i know that's a weird situation that i sh probably shouldn't be in that my team's putting me in but there's got to be some better way of dealing with it because it feels like i just eat shit when it happens yeah i think even if you're like the reddit comps you just kind of have to like play reddit uh and here's the thing. It's not like this doesn't happen. Like, I'm sure LH Cloudy has done some Reddit plays in Contenders. Like, I'm I'm sure he's already in Overwatch League, too. Like, you you can't... Yeah, someone... Here's the thing. I'm not, like, the biggest fan of Flats, mostly because of some of the stuff he's done to me in the past chat. But, like, I totally agree. Like, he's still a really nice guy. I'm not I'm not shit talking him at all. He's, he's a great dude. Uh, I've just, I was kind of cringe in the past, to say the least. Uh, but... Yeah, you, you try to play perfect Overwatch, which you don't need to do in ladder. Mm -hmm. Or in even in team play. Believe it or not, playing perfect Overwatch is like a, a really bad thing for a lot of tier 3 teams. Like, unironically, most tier 3 teams are better teamwork-wise than tier 2, but like tier 2 understands that you don't need to play by, by the book. Playing textbook yeah, I, Overwatch no, man, I is watched, not. I watch Chinese good. contenders. I know what not by the book Overwatch looks yeah, like. Yeah, I, I personally have not watched a lot of Chinese contenders. Like, oh, dude, it's wild. I've maybe watched it's it like wild. a year or two ago, but like you I know watch. that that stuff is crazy, crazy talented. Yeah. Like, I think, I think, playing more aggressive, being not being afraid of making mistakes, will help you out a lot. And may, here's here's the other thing that I think might be interesting. Maybe it'll help you with understanding the crazy shit that happens in Chinese contenders more. Maybe, mm -hmm. maybe it'll help casting. Like I I don't know, uh, I'm not a caster, but like maybe understanding maybe the thought process behind it, of not playing to the book, uh, will help you out. And here's the thing, with comms, I'm gonna tell you this straight up. Keep that up. Keep that up. Uh. There are a lot of really good main tank players. I'm thinking like, and again, don't witch hunt these people. They're great players, chat. Um, I think her name is Nijima or Nimja. Do you know her? I think I've seen her around. Tier tier three tank player. Very quiet. Absolutely insane at main tank. I'm talking about like some of the best main tank mechanics I've ever seen. Biggest problem I personally have with her on main tank is just lack of comms. Uh, Louie, who plays for... Um, somewhere in utah or texas not sure he plays collegiate uh i used to play with him on console very good at arisa like crazy good mechanics but the comms sometimes you get lost because the main tank isn't calming so like keep the comms up i wouldn't be ashamed of you saying that your comms are what carry you because that is a very good thing to have as a main tank player 
So I would yeah. keep that up. I, I no, would like, I would uh, bring that up and not, be like, yeah, the comms are carrying me. I'd be like, dude, hell yeah, my comms are so good, they're carrying me, man. Yeah, no, no, no. It's definitely yeah. something like, God, I wish, uh, I wish you could see the May play that went from when I played May in collegiate, but that was always like, that was a fun time to to calm. Anyways, uh, I think a lot of problems arise when you know it's ranked. Not you're not always gonna get a team that calms at all. Yeah. And like once you hit like masters, I think people reach a point where it's like. They're going to be, like, in comms, but they're not always going to be, like, talking or be, like, talking with each other, you know, because they're just, like, chilling, grinding yeah. ranked. Uh, but I think a lot of the problems with, like, uh, diamond and plat players is, like, sometimes you'll just have five other players who aren't going to join comms. Sometimes, uh, yes. Yes. And it, it happens a lot more, like, the lower you go. Which Personally, I maybe I'm just really lucky, but when I was in unranked to GM, there were very, there were very few games where there were people who weren't in comms. It was more so just that no one was talking. But know yeah. that when you talk, people still hear that. And I would still just get into the habit of talking. Because personally, I feel as though I play better when I am active in comms. Because mm -hmm. when I played on attack mode, um, I was a sub. So I didn't really fit into the comms all the time. And a lot of what I needed to do there was just improve as a player. Which I did a lot of. Don't get me wrong. I'm a much different player now. And I'm thankful for that experience. But like, for me personally because i wasn't in the calm role i would find myself kind of getting like almost bored and then like tilted at the fact that i wasn't hitting all my shots mm -hmm. so like whatever makes you play best do that and even if people aren't in chat still act like you're just playing the game and if they aren't and you realize oh that call well then you have to work around it and here's the thing i understand that you probably play much much better into a team scenario but i think you'll i think this you'll not it, only yeah. I think that you'll not only get better at ladder here, but you're also going to understand, like, when you play OD again, if you ever do, you're going to understand how aggression, you could see it in team play as well. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be nearly as much because you have to play a lot more team, but I don't think that you, I think this won't be a problem for you. I think by forcing yourself to become more aggro, you can then, like, pulmerization. Here, here, this is a Yu-Gi-Oh reference. I don't know if you played any Yu-Gi-Oh. A little bit, a little bit. Polarization fusion summon these two aspects together <laughs> to create the ultimate fusion summon door Reinhardt passive aggressive extraordinaire and completely roll through OD and upset the biggest teams. I think it's doable. But do you have any other questions? Nah, man, I think that's it. I think it clears it up. Is there, what do you want to plug? uh before we leave here because i'm probably gonna upload this to youtube i mean just twitter twitter.com slash doorcasts and then you know whatever the next episode of this is hopefully next time you know i work on those issues and then you guys can watch and i don't get flame retard <laughs> subscribe <laughs> to paz that, this guy's yeah. the best sub the best <laughs> sub the best <laughs> but yeah dude uh i really appreciate you coming in and I, I hope this stuff helps um just let me know keep me updated on what's going on and uh yeah all right man GG's, take it easy. Yeah, GG's, take it easy, man. Bye bye. Um, I always do my closing remarks for each player when I do a VOD. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube, Door. Um, Door is an extremely smart player. Uh, because he watches so much contenders. He watches more contenders than the average tier three player. He is smarter than than the average tier three player, in my opinion. Okay. Um. The problem is, is there's a video actually, and I think this kind of links to his problems, and it's going to be really weird. Um, why being intelligent causes suffering. How being good at games actually leads to suffering. If you guys don't watch Healthy Gamer GG, he makes he. I would I would one hundred percent. Um. I wanna, well, if you're interested in one twitch culture and two just bettering your life as a gamer watch this guy um this is what he's he's struggling with door he just needs to be more confident in his own skin and i think he's honestly gonna hit gm yeah like honestly i think door the thing that door needs to do is be more aggressive and learn to play a little bit worse Honestly, not being afraid of it.
yeah, okay. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, I'm going to put Dora's um, socials down below. Please do check them out. Uh, support your local casters. Support your local casters. Uh, seriously, though, like, casters put in a lot of work off, off the screen that you guys don't realize. And I personally didn't realize until I have talked with Dora, talked with Chef Billy, um, and seen the notes they go through. The, the, they VOD review just like players do. So, like, seriously, go check them out. Please do uh check them out he they're great people too um i stream every monday wednesday friday on twitch i've also been doing stuff on youtube streaming wise but uh please do check out my twitch and be excited for the new rebrands coming soon if you did watch to the end um and yeah i really appreciate everyone for watching but until next time i've got a peace out and paz out i'll see you on the next one peace